Hello, and welcome to episode 41 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the SC-2M Repulsor Tank from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. Although the tank could be painted quite quickly using the techniques outlined in the ATST episodes, I'll be taking inspiration from the wonderful artwork by Sam Lamont, which means I'll be aiming for some more subtle nuances of colour and some heavy weathering. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime the tank in black, followed with a Xenothal pre-shade, but a simple prime in grey or white would also be fine. I'm then going to provide the base colours along with some highlights, which will incorporate several different tones of grey to help define the volumes. We can then apply some black shade to the dark metallic sections of the tank, and we'll provide some careful black lining into the grooves. Our finishing touches will include adding plenty of weathering and battle damage, along with some fun snow effects. Let's begin with the base colours. Here are the three basic levels of grey that I've chosen to use for my tank. You don't have to use these precise colours of course, but I would aim for a similar range of contrast. I've also chosen to mix in some additional tones into each shade of grey, to create a more nuanced colour palette. So I'm going to mix in some Cantor Blue into my darkest grey, some Slanish Grey into my mid-tone, and some Screaming Skull into the brightest grey, each in a roughly 3 to 1 ratio. Again, you don't have to use these exact colours, but I would at least suggest mixing some blues or purples into the darker end of the gradient. Here, I'm mixing my Mechanicus Standard Grey with the Cantor Blue. I'm creating quite a generous amount due to the size of the vehicle, and I'm adding some Vallejo's Glaze Medium just to extend the drying time. I'm then leaving a well free in the palette before mixing my Celestra Grey and Slanish Grey. And I'm now mixing the Screaming Skull into my Elfoon Grey once again, leaving a free well between the previous tone. I'm now going to create two intermediate tones in the empty wells by mixing equal measures of the adjacent tones. Whatever colours you use, I'd suggest aiming for a gradient of around four or five different tones like you can see here. The more experienced painters amongst you will no doubt be quite comfortable creating a more seamless gradient on a wet palette. Before we start, I'm going to remove the driver, base and the guns, and I'm going to use some white tack or poster putty to mount the tank to a pen whilst I work. To help create some stronger contrasts between the different planes of the vehicle, I've chosen to imagine a slightly off-centre light source. This is also entirely optional of course, but will allow us to create a stronger sense of volume. With that in mind, I'm now going to begin blocking in the main areas of colour, starting with the darkest tone, which I'm applying to the underside of the tank. In this inner horseshoe shape, I'm placing the darkest tone just to the more shadowed left-hand side. I'm now using the second tone in the gradient. I'm taking a fairly loose approach as to where I place the colours at this stage, as we can do some neatening and refining later on. Where the two colours meet here at the front, I'm going to do a little wet blending to smooth the transition. I'm now using the next lightest colour. I'm now using my second lightest colour. Here I'm blending this back into the more shadowed area.
I'm now switching back to the darker tone for this inside section. And I'm now using the lightest tone for the brightest sections of the tank. A couple of layers may be needed here to achieve a nice flat finish. With the main colours complete, I'm now doing some tidying up and refining of various sections of the tank to ensure that I'm happy with the overall look. We can also paint the guns with the same set of colours, bearing in mind that one of the segments will be painted red later on. I'm painting in a fairly rough and sketchy way since the guns will be quite heavily weathered later on. What's important is that we achieve a good range of contrast between the shadowed underside and the glinting highlights on the top. I also want to ensure that the lighting is consistent with the rest of the vehicle. In these final stages we can make quite heavy use of some edge highlighting to help sharpen the definition. To achieve a really crisp clean finish, I'm now going to mix some white into my brightest highlights. I'm now using some pure white to give some of these edges maximum definition. It's a subtle touch, but notice that I'm using a slightly darker tone for the edge highlights on the shadowed side of the tank. I'm now going to mix roughly equal measures of lead belcher and black for the metallic sections of the tank. 
I'm applying this to the ridged underside of the vehicle along with various other sections of detailing. There's some room for interpretation here as to which parts you may want to apply this to. Finally, I'm going to mix a little Screaming Skull into some Mephiston Red for the faded red sections of the panelling and the guns. I'm now going to lighten this further by mixing in some additional Screaming Skull in a couple of stages. I'm then using this to lighten the panel on the left side of the vehicle, as well as to highlight the red segments on the guns in line with the rest of the highlights. With the base colours and highlights complete, we're now ready to add some shade. I'm now going to use some neat non oil to shade all of the metallic areas of the tank. I'm also using this to shade the rear section of the tank, which I'd like to appear quite dirty and weathered. To create a darker, more inky tone, I'm now going to mix a few drops of Drakenhof Nightshade into the Long Oil. I'm then using this to carefully blackline all of the grooves in the bodywork. The tank will end up being quite heavily weathered, so I wouldn't worry too much about the odd mistake here.
We can of course use some of the base colour to tidy things up if necessary. We can also use this to strengthen the relief on the front section of the tank. With that done, we're ready to add some finishing touches. The first thing I've chosen to do here is mix a very pale blue using Temple Guard Blue and White. I'm then applying this quite thinly to introduce a subtle blue tint into some of the upturned areas of highlight. This is to give a gentle suggestion of blue sky being reflected in the metal. As with most of these finishing touches, this is of course entirely optional. I'm now going to apply some quite heavy weathering to the vehicle, simply using some of Vallejo's black. Any black would do here, but the reason I've chosen Vallejo's for this is because when thinned, it appears less brown than Citadel's. All I'm doing here is thinning the paint down with water and brushing it on, focusing most heavily on the front section of the tank. This can be built up in several layers to represent a combination of weathered stains and blaster marks. These streaks also help create a nice sense of movement. I also want to create quite heavy smoky deposits on the end of each gun barrel. I might also create various chips and stains elsewhere on the vehicle, particularly around the edges. I'm now going to mix roughly equal measures of Ulthu and Grey and Stormhurst Silver. I'm using this firstly to highlight the metal detailing. We can also use this to highlight some of the edges of the chips and scratches to create a sense of relief. and we can create fresh, smaller scratches with this too. Here, I'm using it to bring back a little edge definition where the weathering is at its heaviest. With that done, we can now glue the guns into place. Next I'm going to create some snowy terrain using Valhalla and Blizzard.
Whilst that's still wet, I'm now going to glue the tank into place. This may displace some of the wet snow, which we can now tidy up before leaving to dry. For the driver, I'm using the exact same colours and techniques as detailed in episode 40, and we can use black or dark grey for the levers. Now the base is dry, we can go ahead and paint the rim. And I'm doing some final bits of retouching, which includes giving a final boost to some of the highlights. We can now glue the driver into place before protecting the miniature with a matte spray. Just as in the previous episode, I'm also applying some gloss varnish to the shiny parts of the snowtrooper. Finally, I'd like to create the impression of snowy deposits on the vehicle itself and we're going to briefly explore three simple ways to achieve this. One, simply using some thinned white paint. Two, using Valhallen Blizzard. And three, using an ice and snow wash by Precision Ice and Snow, although there are other methods including the use of snowy flock. If you're on a budget, then it's quite possible to simply thin some white paint to a thin, layer-like consistency and simply brush it into the recesses where you'd expect the snow to collect. It won't really have the correct texture or glistening finish, but it is simple and effective enough. Secondly, we could use Valhallen Blizzard. This is a little more messy to work with, but it does stay wet plenty long enough for us to manipulate it how we wish, and the finished result is more granular and sparkly. Finally, let's take a look at the ice and snow wash. After giving the bottle a good shake or a stir, we can pour some into the palette and brush it onto the model. This behaves exactly like you'd expect a wash to, collecting nicely in all of the tiny gaps and recesses. At this point it looks just like a thin white wash, and it does take some time to dry, which we can accelerate with the use of a hairdryer. Once dry, we can see that the wash has left a very fine, sparkling, snow-like deposit with minimum effort, and this is what I'll now be applying to my tank. I'm focusing more heavily on the lower portions of the vehicle. Although this collects mostly in the recesses, the wash will also leave a fine layer of snow over the flat sections of the model too. And this completes the Repulsor tank. Thank you for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed the episode, and that you find some of the ideas useful. As usual, you'll find full details of all the products used in the video description. My biggest thanks as always go to the generous group of patrons who are funding this series. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!